Hello there everyone, you've tuned in UXW Bill and today's quick little video features this PS2 Model 50Z. I'd like to take a moment and tell all of you out there that I take feedback from most of my viewers very seriously. And so it is that I have noticed a certain amount of disappointment being expressed when I say smoke test, which really began as just a silly little joke and that's all it's ever been meant as, and there isn't any actual smoke that comes up. Well, maybe in this particular quick video we'll be changing that because these IBM PS2 computers have tantalum or tantrum capacitors installed in them that sometimes short out, especially if they accumulate moisture, and they usually explode in a fairly dramatic but ultimately pretty harmless manner, especially since most of them are bypass capacitors that aren't strictly necessary for the design of the circuit to function. I found this computer while I was cleaning out the Roach Palace, something that I have accelerated yet again for varying reasons, and I have no idea where it came from or what its story is. However, I did notice something interesting. Someone, maybe even me, at some point, has replaced the clock and CMOS memory retention battery. Who knows, maybe it's even still good. But I thought we might go ahead and try to power this machine up just to see what it might do. Who knows, maybe there'll be some smoke and sparks along the way, it's hard to tell. I certainly hope it doesn't blow up, but for all of those, for all of you out there who just love it when I say this, smoke test! And we're going to be doing this honest to goodness, unrehearsed. Put the camcorder right in front of the computer there. Find a power cord over here. And we'll go ahead, plug it in there. There's an extension cord right here. We'll just try it first without any monitor, mouse, or keyboard hooked up, and if it seems to do anything at all, well, I've got a monitor right over here that I can hook up. I certainly hope I turned the outlet strip in the garage off, otherwise I may end up really surprising myself here. Okay, I must have. Here we go, folks. I hope I don't blow up my camcorder. I don't hear it doing anything. Maybe the power supply is dead. I don't know. Well, no smoke, but uh, no sign of life either. How very disappointing. Okay, so the extension cord I'm using really isn't the best, and the power cord was a little bit questionable as well. So I've gone ahead and traded it out for one that I know to work, and we'll see if that leads to any difference in the result. Headphone users, you might want to watch out. Well, it is running, and there's no smoke. That about figures. I put up a video thinking at least one tantrum capacitor is going to go off in the machine, and what do you know, nothing does. I think it's time to go ahead and hook up a monitor, mouse, and keyboard to it, and just see what we get. It might have powered up before. I really couldn't hear it. It's not very loud. Now I'm willing to blithely assume that this IBM Personal System 2 color display is in working order. It does have high voltage and when the signal cable was disconnected it produced a raster as part of its built-in self-test. But a lot of these displays have begun to suffer from the ailments of time, bad capacitors, and similar wear and tear on other parts. This one seems to be working so I guess we'll see if we get any video out of it. Hey, a memory count. Let's see if we can brighten that up a little bit to where you might actually be able to read it. Let's see if this machine's happy or not. Two megabytes. Look out, major performance system right here. I even heard the floppy drive seek. Given how famous those are for failing, that's gotta be some kind of a miracle. It's kinda hanging around. Of course, it may not be too happy about its hard drive. I think this machine got dumped on the floor through some very unfortunate circumstances. And no, it wasn't me that did it. Yeah, it's kind of sitting around an awful long time there. So I'm thinking it may not be completely happy about its hard drive. Well, 
unfortunately folks I had the camera turned off there was smoke oh it smells oh it smells like wood Let's see if we can figure out what it might have been not good whatever it is Ooh, now it's starting to really smell silicone-y. Okay, I can't do this with just one hand, so I'm going to have to turn the camera off. Well, now that the dust and the smoke have settled, I don't think it was the hard drive that smoked. The hard drive is no good. It throws a 10483 error code, which is definitely some sort of a mechanical problem. The source of the smoke seems to have been the power supply itself. If you look very carefully through that grill, you might be able to see... There's a white plastic bodied capacitor that looks to be sitting right across the power switch. Maybe some sort of a suppression capacitor of some kind. And you can definitely tell that the casing is cracked in two. If you can see it, I don't know how well it'll show up on camera. But the casing is cracked in two and the smoke smell is the strongest around there. That capacitor probably isn't strictly necessary for this power supply to operate correctly. So as soon as I can find my security screwdriver bits, I might just go ahead and pop it out of there. Or maybe see if I can harvest a suitable replacement out of something else. But that was definitely the source of the smoke. The computer kept right on running. Although they usually do up to a point. But that smoke just kind of permeates everything now. Even this fan smells like it, and that's why it kind of makes it difficult to localize the source of where the magic got out of the circuitry at. The motherboard itself seems to be okay. I do have some other power supplies. I think I'll go get one and maybe try to find a new hard drive and see if this machine can possibly live again real quickly. This was supposed to be a quick video, but now it's turning into a real adventure. A couple of minutes with my security bit set later, I've got the power supply open and pretty much all the parts still look like parts. Even the main fuse is still intact, which is a little bit surprising. Right there it is, folks. If you couldn't see it before, you can see it now. That little capacitor just sitting across the power switch. Just looks like it cracked open when it failed. And it really does smell like wood smoke. That is the most amazing thing. Fellow YouTuber V Westlife had a Tandy EGA monitor that blew up on him not long after he was using it and he commented on how it smelled like wood smoke if my memory can be trusted and I really thought you know what kind of an electronic component could smell like wood smoke when it burns evidently these little capacitors do I mean it is for all the world like someone started a bonfire inside this power supply not too far off there was a little bit of a fire for a little while I'm sure this particular power supply, I've seen these from two different manufacturers in the PS2's Model 50 and 70. This one was manufactured by Zenith Radio in Mexico. Yes, they really manufactured computer parts and for a while even computers of their own. Although rather interestingly, they didn't put their brand name anywhere on this. Sometimes it shows up on the circuit board in the Model 80 power supply, but for the most part these are anonymous. The other manufacturer of these power supplies is Aztec Custom Power, which is a division of Emerson Network Power these days. And I think the Aztec unit is actually a little bit better made. Plus, at least sometime, you could actually hire Aztec to repair these. They had a service where you could ship these in, and while they wouldn't provide schematics, they would repair any power supply that they had manufactured over time. Probably not cheap. I never tried to have it done. But at least it was an option. I don't know if it's something they still do or not. Might be worth looking into that. But since I believe this power supply to be in good working condition, although it likely hasn't seen power in several years, we'll just go ahead and swap them out. Then I'll try to find a hard drive for this machine and see if we can get it to pop. Hopefully not literally. This would do a very nice job of explaining why I never heard any post error beeps while I was waiting for the machine to come up with an error code. I don't know who was responsible for this particular idea of a uh, fix, but it wasn't me. Luckily, I think I've got a few of these things kicking around. By the way, if you take your own PS2 Model 50 or 70 apart, and it's the later shortboard model, 
If you want to keep your configuration intact, make sure this cable stays plugged in at all times, so long as your battery is good, otherwise it won't matter very much. And another thing that came to mind that I wanted to talk about, but I didn't while I was taking apart these power supplies, some of you have probably noticed that some of these power supplies have a white switch, like this one, and others, like the replacement, have a red switch. Now, what the reason for the difference is, I really can't say. I haven't seen any red switches on IBM PS2s past the Model 80 and the 65 and the 60. All the models that are newer than that have uh, had a white power switch. I've asked around about it, and the only story that I've ever heard is that it might have had something to do with red switches in portions of the European portion of the world, indicating some sort of an emergency purpose, and that IBM was later forced to change the color of their switches. Is it true? I don't know, but it certainly sounds plausible enough. I have a big box full of these hard drives, and no, you can't have, trade, or buy one, so please don't even ask, that were in working order once upon a time. This one's a little bit larger than was in the machine. This is an 80 megabyte drive. The original was a 60. These all present the same card ID to the system, but sometimes the system BIOS will detect for some reason that there is a difference and it'll demand the reference disk to try and configure the system. Whether or not that'll happen here, I really don't know. But I think at this point, we're ready to throw the cover back on this thing, try to go again, and hopefully we'll have better results this time than we did the first. Okay, lettuce and germs, let's try this again. I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous. I didn't pop anything then. No power. Our monitor's got power, but alas, our computer does not because I'm a dingbat. Didn't plug it in. That's probably an omen of things to come, if I had to guess. Here we go. All right, we've got power. Got to power on self-test again. We'll see what it thinks of its new hard drive. No idea if there's anything on it. We'll probably end up in IBM Cassette Basic in all likelihood. Three oh one keyboard error. Of course, I didn't plug the keyboard in in case something was disastrously wrong with the power supply. Because even though this is a cheap and crappy rubber dome keyboard, I mean. It's a Dell quiet key, so it could always be worse. But I'd rather not smoke even a crappy keyboard if something was still going to be wrong. So we'll just have to see what we get here. But at least so far it seems happy. Of course, this is one of the things that contributes to the demise of an interest in vintage computers, especially anything from a given series. Time gets even with stuff. Stuff wears down. And you can't always fix it. I mean, something like that's probably pretty fixable. It'd likely live just fine without that capacitor sitting across the contacts of that switch. Okay, it's booting up. Evidently there was something on that hard drive. Well, let's just go ahead and see if the data is set right on the system. If you can even see it, which you may or may not be able to. I'll try and brighten this up. That's as far open as this monitor can go. But if we turn it off to the side, it's not too bad. Well, it's about a year out. <laughs> but it's close, I'll give it that. May 12, 2015, and this is what, June... I don't know, June 17th, I think it is? About the time. It should be a little bit after noon. The time is way off, but at least it hasn't gone back into the 1980s. I wonder what else is on this hard drive. Looks like just a vanilla copy of DOS. MS or PC, I don't know, but we're going to find out. It's MS-DOS version 6.22. So I guess the next thing to do for this computer would be to take it inside, clean it up a little bit, find the eject button for the floppy drive, which unfortunately I think disappeared during the uh, events that took place in the Roach Palace, and maybe find something interesting to do with this. The uh, Model 50Z has always been one of my favorite PS2s. I think my all-time favorite is probably the all-in-one Model 25. 
But the 50Z was one of the first machines that I ever actually got to own, and so therefore they hold a special place with me. It's kind of fun to hop one of these up and see what you can make it do. Put in a processor accelerator, an 8514 graphics card, which I intend to demonstrate at some point, because for 1987 technology, even though it was fairly limited and the refresh rate was painfully low, the 8514A graphics adapter was truly an amazing thing, especially compared to the CGA and monochrome displays that a lot of us would have had at the time. So thank you for watching this ramble that turned out far longer than expected. At least it has a happy ending. The machine lives again. And this power supply over here can probably live to fight again as well on another day. So again, thank you for watching. Do feel free to leave a comment if you have one.